एडजस्ट कीजिए जय राधा माधव उंज Krishna 
Reading from Canto 4, titled Creation of the Fourth Order, Chapter 31, titled Narad Instructs the Prachetas, verse number 2. But before that, we'll take shelter of the pristine verses of Srimad Bhagavatam, which empowers anybody and everybody. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam Namaskritya Naram Chaiva Narottamam Devim Saraswatim Vyasam Sato Jayamudiraye Nashta Prayeshu Abhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavatya Uttama Shloke Bhakti Bhavati Naishtiki so today we are reading from the Canto 4, Chapter 31, titled <clears throat> Narada Instructs the Prachetas, Text Number 2. Dikshita Brahma Satrena Sarva Bhautatma Medhasa Pratichyam Dishi Velayam 
सिद्धो भूद यत्र जाजलि दीक्षिता ब्रह्म सत्रेण सर्वभौतात्म मेधसा प्रतीक्षा दिशि वेलायाम सिद्धो भूयत्र जाजलि दीक्षिता ब्रह्म सत्रेण सर्वभौतात्म मेधसा प्रतीक्षा दिशि वेलायाम सिद्धो भूयत्र जाजलि दीक्षिता ब्रह्म सत्रेण सर्वभूतात्म मेधस प्रतीक्षा दिशि वेलायाम सिद्धो भूयत्र जाजलि दीक्षिता ब्रह्म सत्रेण सर्वभूतात्म मेधसा प्रतीक्षा दिशि वेलायाम सिद्धो भूयत्र जाजलि दीक्षिता ब्रह्म सत्रेण सर्वभूतात्म मेधसा प्रतीक्षा दिशि वेलाया सिद्धो भूयत्र जाजलि दीक्षित बींग डिटर्माइंड ब्रह्म सत्रेण बाय अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ द सुप्रीम स्पिरिट सर्व ऑल भूत लिविंग एंटिटीज आत्म में धसा कंसिडरिंग लाइक वन सेल्फ प्रतीचाम इन द वेस्टर्न दिशी डिरेक्शन वेलायाम ऑन द सी शोर सिद्ध परफेक्ट अभूत बिकेम यत्र वेर जाजलि ही the great sage jajali translation and purport by his divine grace ac bhakti vedanta swam shri la prabhupad shri la prabhupad ki jai translation the prachitas went to the sea shore in the west where the great liberated sage jajali was residing after perfecting the spiritual knowledge by which one becomes equal to all living entities the prachetas became perfect in krishna consciousness purport the word brahma satra means cultivation of spiritual knowledge actually both the vedas and severe austerity are known as brahma vedas tatvam tapo brahma brahma also means the absolute truth one has to cultivate knowledge of the absolute truth by pursuing the studies in the vedas and undergoing severe austerities and penances the prachetas properly executed this function and consequently became equal to all other living entities as bhagavad gita 18.54 confirms brahma bhutah prasannatma na shochati na kaanshati samah sarveshu bhuteshu मद भक्ति लभते पराम वन हुज दस ट्रांसेंडेंटली सिचुएटेड एट वंस रियलाइजेस द सुप्रीम ब्रह्मण एंड बिकम्स फुली जॉयफुल ही नेवर लमेंट्स नॉट डिजायर्स टू हैव एनीथिंग ही इज इक्वली डिस्पोज्ड टू एवरी लिविंग एंटिटी इन दैट स्टेट ही अटेंस प्योर डिवोशनल सर्विस अनटू मी when one actually becomes spiritually advanced he does not see the difference between one living entity and another 
This platform is attained by determination. When perfect knowledge is expanded, one ceases to see outward covering of the living entities. He sees rather the spirit soul within the body. Thus he does not make distinction between a human being and an animal, a learned brahmana and a chandal. Vidya vinaya sampanne brahmane gavihastini <clears throat> the humble sage, by the virtue of true knowledge, sees with equal vision a learned and a gentle brahmana, a cow, an elephant, a dog, and a dog eater, the outcast. Bhagavad Gita 5.18 A learned person sees equally sees everyone equally on a spiritual basis and a learned person, a devotee, wants to see everyone developed in Krishna consciousness. The place where the Prachetas went were residing, the place where the Prachetas were residing was perfect for executing spiritual activities, for it is indicated that the great sage Jajali attained mukti or liberation there. One desiring perfection or liberation should associate with a person who is already liberated. This is called Sadhu Sangha, associating with a perfect devotee. Oma Jnana Timirandhasya Jnana Anjana Shalakaya Chakshur Unmilitam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Venamaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Sthapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamahyam Dadati Swakadantitam Vandeham Shri Guru Ho Shri Yuta Padakamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavamsha Shri Rupam Sadgrajatam Sahagana Raghunathan Vitam Tam Sajeevam Sadvaitam Savadhutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Radhika Shri Vishakantamsha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagat Pate Gopesha Gopika Kantra Radha Kamantra Namostate Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrinda Vaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pramahari Vanchakal Patarubhischa Kripasan Rubhya Evacha Patitanam Pavane Bhyavishnivya Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasadi Gauru Bhaktivinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prishthaya Bhutale, Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swamin Itinamine. Namaste Saraswate Deve, Gauravani Pracharine, Nirvishesha, Shunyavadi, Pashat Deshakarine. Mukam Karoti Vachalam Pangam Langayate Giram Yatrapa Tamaham Mande Shri Gurum De Natarinam Paramananda Madhavam Shri Chaitanya Ishwaram Hari Hyom Satsat Hari Krishna So Prachetas are about to be instructed by Narad Muni, and this is the chapter 31st of the fourth canto. Prachetas, they spent thousands of years when they were at home, ruling the planet. But they were benedicted by the Supreme Lord earlier that towards the end of their life, they will remember again that supreme message of Lord Krishna. And then they will revive their complete attraction towards the Supreme Lord. And they will go back home, back to God. So to make that prediction come true, Supreme Lord sent Narad Muni. But even before that, the Prajitas realized that a lot of time has passed. Thousands of years have passed. They have been ruling the planet. And uh, now they have a son called Daksha also, who is very expert as the name says. So it's time now to hang the boots and go back in the path of self-realization. 
all the ten brothers, they put the wife Marisha in charge of their son Daksha and, he, and they leave together. Point to be noted that when they were doing meditation and austerities, penances and even offering prayers to Lord Krishna, these ten brothers were together. And now when it came to give up everything and again take to the path of self-realization, again these ten brothers were together. So their unity was something which pleased Lord Krishna very much. Uh, so again these ten brothers they decided to leave their kingdom. And they went to the seashore in the west where the great sage Jajali was residing. So this seashore in the west was the place where Jajali attained his perfection, as the the purport says. And uh, it is said that after perfecting the spiritual knowledge by which one becomes equal towards all living entities, the Prachetas became perfect in Krishna consciousness. So Jajali was also named, known for this uh, <clears throat> attitude of being equal to all living entities. Sarva Bhutatma Medhasa. Considering everyone one, like one's own self. So, uh, Jajali was a sage who was a lifelong brahmachari. And he was practicing austerities and penances. He would consider heat and cold, wind and rain to be the same. And he was really practicing this, trying to learn this art of becoming equal to everybody. So... At one point of time, when Jajali was standing like a pillar in the forest amidst the heat, rain, shower, sun, two birds came on his head and sat on his head. His head was full of matted hair. Matted hair means nice cushion. So the birds thought it's a nice place to stay. So they started staying there. After some times, and the Jajali was seeing and he was thinking that the Paramatma who is there in my heart is the same Paramatma in the heart of these birds. Until unless the Paramatma in the heart of those birds gives them instruction to come and sit on my head, how can they come? And if that's, if that's what the Paramatma wants, who am I to interfere? That was his state of consciousness. So he did not move, he kept standing like a pillar. The birds, they took advantage. They came and made a nest on his head using his matted hair. And Jajali was noticing all that, but still he didn't move, he was standing. Then after some time, the birds came and they laid their eggs in the nest also. Two eggs. Jajali didn't move still, because he wanted to be equal to all living entities. Then finally, those two eggs also hashed out, two, another two birds came. And they also started going out with their parents every morning and returning every evening. Jajali was just seeing the family growth happening. One day the parent birds did not return, only the kids returned. Jajali noticed that also, didn't revolt or do anything. One day the kid birds, they went out but they didn't come back for six days. But Jajali didn't move, he kept standing for six days. But after six days, somehow these kids birds, they returned. Then again, after a few days, these kids birds, they left. And you know, a long, long time passed away, they never came back. So after waiting for a long time, Jajali ultimately thought enough is enough. And then he went, he started moving. And then he went and he washed his hair and head in the sea. This sea which is we are talk they are talking about. And then he was thinking while having bath that there is no more tolerant or no more or no, or no person better than me in being equal to others. Like that, that pride had come within his heart. See, look at me, I am the most 
ब्रह्म भूता प्रसन्न आत्मा काइंड ऑफ पर्सनैलिटी समह सर्वेशु भूतेशु फॉर मी ऑल लिविंग एंटिटीज आर इक्वल सो दिस प्राइड केम इन हिज हार्ट देन द सी डेमी गॉड ही टोल्ड हिम दैट यू शुड गो एंड मीट अनदर पर्सन कॉल्ड एस तुला धर एंड हैव सम डिस्कशंस विथ हिम ऑन धर्म so jajali came out after having bath and then looked out for went in search of tuladhara and then when he talked with tuladhara he realized that tuladhara is much much more advanced like miles more advanced than jajali in krishna consciousness so at that time jajali really understood what it means to be krishna consciousness and then again he comes back to this place and then continues his process of krishna consciousness and attains perfection still even after attaining perfection jajali is continuing to reside there now prachetas have also decided let's go to the place where jajali is staying and therefore they also want to learn what that spiritual knowledge by which one becomes equal towards all living entities so the the sage jajali was an authority in that and they wanted to cultivate that so that's why this is the background um, which i just wanted to say the purport says the word brahma bhuta brahma satra means cultivation of spiritual knowledge actually both vedas and civil austerity are known as brahma vedas tat tatvam tapo brahma brahma means brahma also means the absolute truth vedas tatvam tapo brahma and tapo also means brahma so one has to cultivate the knowledge of the absolute truth by studying by pursuing the studies in the vedas and undergoing severe austerities and penances this the bhagavad gita says that austerities sacrifice and charity should not be stopped at any moment because they purify even the pure souls so it doesn't matter to which degree one has become purified even if you have become a narad muni still these austerities sacrifice and penances and charities these things should not be stopped <clears throat> especially when we talk about austerities what does the word austerity mean the austerity means taking some voluntary discomfort for the purpose of advancing in spiritual life if you take some voluntary discomfort to do a hartal just to get your salary increased that cannot be called as austerity if some riot is happening somewhere and if you decide i'll not eat for 30 days just to get this political man of agenda get settled that is not called austerity austerity means that which is done for hari if it is not being done for hari then it is not austerity it is demoniac austerity it is the you come in the category of hiranyakashipu so when you take some voluntary discomfort it gives a lot of space to you in your mind to think about krishna why because this voluntary discomfort helps you to get unentangled from the network of your senses right now i am too much addicted to sense gratification but if i take some austerity today is ekadashi yogini ekadashi if i take some austerity of eating less chanting more uh, somehow minimizing the needs of the body and engaging more in spiritual life then it gives me some kind of an upper hand as far as entanglement in the sensory objects are concerned when i get unentangled from the network of these senses then even for a moment i realize that i am not the body i am a spirit soul it gives me a better opportunity to realize especially ekadashis we can realize more effectively that i am not the body i am a spirit soul so austerity is they help a lot and then in that environment the mind becomes little peaceful the senses calm down otherwise the senses are like snakes all the time they are demanding give me sense object give me sense object give me sense object but when you do some austerities the senses they lose their energy and then they stop demanding and then the mind which was completely overpowered by the senses the mind overpowers the senses earlier the senses had overpowered the mind 
now the mind overpowers the senses so they so therefore the mind comes in control and when the mind comes in control that is the beginning of the stage of mode of goodness and then but this has to be coupled by the reading of the vedas vedas tattva tapo brahma simply if you do austerity and if you do not read the bhagavad gita and the bhagavatam that also is not very effective because how do you direct your mind towards the brahma your mind has taken control of your senses very good but who has taken control of your mind mind cannot be trusted so therefore intelligence should also come into action and you should be understanding why you are doing what you are doing if you do not know why you are doing what you are doing then very soon some trick of maya will come and you will not be able to understand what's going on and then you will not be having the uh, the capacity to dif- differentiate what is right and what is wrong and you will fall prey so therefore austerity coupled with the study of the scriptures makes you brahma brings you to the consciousness of divine and then propat says one has to cultivate knowledge of the absolute truth by pursuing studies in the vedas and undergoing severe austerities and penances so both have to go hand in hand if you only study the vedas but uh, you know you're not executing the austerity of no meat eating no gambling no illicit sex no intoxication attending the mangala arti if these austerities if you are not taking then you may just become a mundane scholar of the vedas propad calls them armchair philosophers armchair speculators they sit on a chair like this they put their hands on the arms and then they like like to have a glass of liquor in their hand and they want to discuss bhagavad gita because there's no austerity in their life chila propad when he visited the west he found many sanyasis in the west who were so much addicted to drinking wine and eating meat propad said what kind of renunciants they are they call themselves as father brother but they are not able to be austere so what's the point of their knowledge similarly there is another category of people who don't worry who don't care for knowledge all they want to do is austerity that is again hiranyakashipu mentality hiranyakashipu did not know knew know the atma tattva but he was very good in austerity that also did not bring him to the ultimate brahma bhuta platform the mayavadis can be also considered in that category they do not know the atma tattva they only know that i have to merge in with krishna they do not know the highest understanding mad bhaktam labhate param they attain my devotional service that aspect they do not know and they continue doing austerities throughout their life so doesn't help so therefore therefore shila prabhupad says that austerities and study of vedas both should be done under the direct supervision of a bona fide spiritual master and a bona fide spiritual master can guide you how much austerity to do why if it is not an ekadashi why do you want to fast what will you attain the bona fide spiritual master will guide like this bona fide spiritual master will say that okay you are trying to fast you are unable to fast better you take some fruits and chant hare krishna but a person who does not have a bona fide spiritual master they will simply be attached to the austerities just to you know gain some appreciation in the association of people another example which the shastras give that some people they say that they are doing nirjala but when they go to have bath they put their head below water and then they slurp water within and then they come out and they say look at me i am doing nirjala <laughs> yeah so that is that that means that they have not taken shelter of a bona fide spiritual master they are too much attached to these rituals rules and regulations similarly we know of a place called varanasi where at one point of time the brahmanas were just known for doing so much vad vivad whether they are their achar is of the highest standard or not they don't know but given a point they will just take some verse i think this in my opinion i feel this according to me blah 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 everything will go on and on for hours together so both of them don't help 
one needs to do these austerities and penances as sanctioned by the spiritual master and one needs to study the vedas as sanctioned under the direction of the spiritual master otherwise both these paths can be misleading one can miss the whole thing even going through these paths therefore um in the brahma samhita krishna says advaitam achyutam anadim anantarupam adyam purana purusham navayovanam cha vedeshu durlabham adurlabham atma bhakto govinda madhu purusham tamaham bhajam so even if you study the vedas and practice the austerities durlabha krishna is unattainable but atma bhakto if you get the mercy of some devotee of krishna and if you practice devotional service to krishna vedeshu durlabham adurlabham atma bhakto for for a person who is a devotee of krishna everything is adurlabh easily obtainable that is the point which we have to understand so therefore the prachetas properly executed this function the word properly means they took the guidance of jajali muni and they took the guidance which lord shiva had given uh, which later lord vishnu had given and now narad muni will also come so they will take proper guidance they will do proper austerities and then consequently become equal to all other living entities brahma bhutah prasannatma na shochati na kamshati samah sarveshu bhuteshu mad bhaktim labhate param one who is thus transcendently situated at once realizes the supreme brahman and becomes fully joyful he never laments nor desires to have anything he is equally disposed to every living entity in that state he attains pure devotional service to me so brahma bhuta for the mayavadis brahma bhuta is the only target of life they want to realize that i am non different in quality from the supreme spirit soul however they become confused as far as the aspect of quantity is concerned so therefore the aim of their life is somehow become one with the supreme but they do not know that brahma bhuta is a milestone in spiritual life it is not the goal of spiritual life the goal of my life is not to come to the brahma bhuta platform the goal of my life is to continue after the brahma bhuta platform into the mad bhaktim lavate param state that means once i attain the brahma bhuta platform i have to continue rendering devotional service to krishna that is the goal of my life but the mayavadis they want to stop at brahma bhuta but the devotees they want to go ahead of brahma bhuta na shochati na kamshati samah sarveshu bhuteshu in fact if somebody is practicing krishna consciousness sincerely under the direction of a bona fide spiritual master even if they are struggling to come up to the stage of brahma bhuta prasannatma due to the consequential effect of practicing krishna consciousness in a period, in a in a very short period of time they will come to this brahma bhuta prasannatma even if somebody is too much entangled in material life even if someone is too much attached to their body and to the extensions of their body even if someone is too much agitated by sex desire even if someone someone is too much bewildered by the fal- false philosophies of this world such as communism marxism nazism fascism etc etc still if they simply continue to chant the hari krishna mahamantra following the four regulative principles and somehow they stick to the association of devotees and over a period of time even without trying they will attain the stage of na shochati na kamsha they will not lament for what they have lost and they will not hanker for what they don't have why because they have tasted krishna they have achieved the lotus feet of krishna after achieving which they really feel that i don't need anything else and i don't care for what is not with me and what is going on if i have krishna i don't need anything and then over a period of time see prabhupada is saying in this purport when one actually becomes spiritually advanced he does not see the difference between one living entity and another this platform is attained by determination when perfect knowledge is expanded one ceases to see outward covering of the living entity then what does he see 
he sees rather the spirit soul within the body. Thus, he does not make distinctions between a human being, an animal, a learned brahmana, and chandal. In the last paragraph, Srila Prabhupada says, a learned person sees everybody equally on a spiritual basis. Then he writes again, just listen, a learned person, comma, a devotee. That means Prabhupada is highlighting that only a devotee can be a learned person. And then what does he want to see? He is not seeing any difference. Then what is he seeing? He wants to see everyone developed in Krishna consciousness. This is the real meaning of Brahma Bhakta Prasanna. This basically means that a devotee is looking at this Brahmana and he is looking at this dog and he is looking at this dog eater, he is looking at this cow and he is looking at this elephant. So what is his thought process? What does it mean that he is a Samadarshina? Does it sprinkle it on the head of him and his family members and then he will call the dog eater, wash his head wash his feet and sprinkle it on the head of him and his family members. Does it mean that? Samaha Sarvesh Bhutesh and Pandita Samadarshina. There is no difference between the Brahmana and the dog eater. What does this mean? That I will serve the Brahmana also, I will serve the dog eater also. Brahmana will come, okay, give me some food which is offered to Krishna, I want to eat that. Dog eater will come, oh, I want that black dog. Get it, cut it, try it, give it to me. I am your servant. Pandita Samadarshina, I am equal to everybody, student of Jajali Muni. Does it mean that? No. The point which is important is that he sees everybody at the spiritual platform and wants everybody to be to develop in their Krishna consciousness. So Samadarshina means when he is looking at a particular Brahmana, he is thinking, okay, here is a Brahmana who has engaged himself in some good activities, activities in the mode of goodness. Now, this is a very good chance for him to hit the Shuddha Sattva platform. What can I do so that he can further progress in his Krishna consciousness? Okay, I can invite the Brahmana and I can engage him in giving discourses in Srimad Bhagavatam. The Bhagavatam will do the rest for him. And I will give some nice prasad to him. So that the Brahmana does not compromise his Pathan, Pathan, Yajan, Yajan. I will give proper Dakshina to him. In this way, the Brahmana will advance. The Pandita is thinking in that. The devotee of Krishna is thinking in that. The devotee of Krishna nests sees the cow. So then he will think, okay, that this is this is a living entity who is having the body of a cow. Chila Prabhupada in his fifth canto purports, he says, uh, a person who is in the mode of goodness was a cow in his previous life. A person in the mode of passion was a tiger or a lion in the previous life. And a person in the mode of ignorance was a monkey in his previous life. So when he sees the cow, he will understand, here is a cow destined to become a human being in the next life. So if I engage the cow nicely, if I tie the cow in some place where constantly devotees are sitting and chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram. If I make the cow feel loved, if I give the proper food to the cow, if I keep the cow clean, you know, the cows, they although they pass stool and urine, but they don't like to sit or stand near that stool and urine. Cows actually want an environment where at least twice or thrice in a day, their shed is cleaned. And if you do that, the cows feel happy. And then you will not see tears, tear marks in front of their eyes. They will help you more, serve you more, give more milk. And simply by keeping the cows happy, a mystical well-being spreads all over the planet. So when a Brahmana sees the cow, he thinks that let me serve this cow nicely. It's going to become a human being in the next life. Let me give the right environment to this cow. Let me not send this cow to the slaughterhouse. And in this way, if I offer Krishna Prasad to the cow, if I take the milk from the cow and offer it to Krishna, then the pious credits of the cow is increasing. In that way, the cow will get a lot of help in progressing in Krishna consciousness. Similarly, when this Pandita or devotee of Krishna, learned person, when he sees a dog, what does he think? Did let me catch the dog and make him sit in the Bhagavad Gita class? No. 
A dog cannot listen to Bhagavad Gita. The dog cannot become a brahmachari. So, the dog has to be simply fed some Krishna Prasad. By eating Krishna Prasad, the dog will progress and get more mercy of Krishna. So, in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, there was a devotee called Shivanand Sen. He used to take everybody uh, every year from Bengal to Puri to see Lord Chaitanya during the Chaturmas. The Shivanand Sen was the transcendental yatra organizer. So once in the yatra, a dog caught up with them. Nobody knew whose dog was it. Somehow he just came. Shivanand Sen was so merciful that he allowed the dog to be in the yatra group. And he was feeding the dog also properly. When Prasad time used to come, everybody used to sit and eat. The dog also used to sit a little apart. And he was also, the dog was also given Prasad. But all of a sudden, the dog vanished. And Shivanand Sen was feeling so bad. that I couldn't take care of a spirit soul properly. This is called being Brahma Bhuta. With the other Yatris, Shivanand Sen was discussing the glories of Lord Chaitanya. But to the dog, he was only giving Krishna. And because a devotee of Lord Chaitanya, Shivanand Sen, was having so much anxiety for this dog, once this dog, after it was lost, once when all the Yatris went to Puri in front of Lord Chaitanya, they saw that the same dog who was lost was sitting in front of Lord Chaitanya. And Lord Chaitanya was having some Jagannath Prasad in his hand and he was throwing it and the dog was eating it. So being a Pandita means, here is a Brahmana, I'll engage him in Bhagavatam discourse. Here is a dog, I'll feed him Krishna Prasad. Here is a cow, I'll take the milk of that cow and use it in Krishna's service. Here is a dog eater. I will tell the dog eater that you stop eating the dog, I will give you a nice prasad. You come to my house. And when you come here, you do some service. I will give you some dakshina. And after that, when you are done, this, finished doing the service, sit here and listen to the chanting of Hare Krishna Mahamantra. Listen to the Bhagavatam discourse. Like that. So this is the meaning of having an equal vision for a brahmana, cow, elephant, dog and a dog eater. This is what it means. That somehow or the other, whomever I meet, the constant thought process in my mind or in my heart should be, what can I do for this spirit soul who is having a dog's body? What can I do for this spirit soul who has a brahmana's body? What can I do for this spirit soul who has an elephant's body? What can I do for this spirit soul who has a dog eater's body so that they can advance in their journey back home, back to God? This is called being Pandita Samadarshinaha. That's why Prabhupada writes, a learned person sees everyone equally on a spiritual basis. And a learned person, a devotee, wants to see everyone developed in Krishna consciousness. This is called Pandita consciousness. Until unless one has developed this consciousness where he or she has an anxiety in their heart to tell everybody that yes, there is a Supreme Personality of Godhead and the name of that Supreme Personality of Godhead is Krishna. Until unless one develops this ambition of bringing everybody close to Krishna, they cannot become a Pandit. And this ambition is called as Uttam Shlok Lagasa. This the same ambition Bharat Maharaj had. So, further in the purport it is mentioned, the place where the Prachetas were residing was a perf was perfect for executing spiritual activities, for it is indicated that the great sage Jajali attained Mukti there. One desiring perfection or liberation should associate with the person who is actually already liberated. Two things are important. The place where you practice your Krishna consciousness is important. <clears throat> and the association of devotees is also important. Actually, the place becomes important. Any place in this world becomes important if the sadhus or the devotees of Krishna are residing there. Suppose you want to practice Krishna consciousness away from a place where the devotees are sitting. How? It will be very difficult, especially in the initial stages. How many of you can uh, sit in a fish market and chant Hare Krishna 16 rounds one shot? Please raise your hands. An advanced devotee can do that. When Madhavendra Puri felt that he should not have desired for that Amrita Keli 
or that sweet nectarian kheer which was being offered to Gopal. He left the temple, went to a marketplace, sat there, started chanting. And he, at that time, he didn't realize. And then when the market became fully hustle bustle, still he continued chanting. So that is Madhavendra Puri, he can do that. But how many of us can go to a fish market and chant Hare Krishna? Or go to the Bombay Stock Exchange, sit there and chant Hare Krishna? Not possible. So therefore, the place where you practice Krishna consciousness, at least in the initial stages, should be favorable. When you are standing in front of a casino, do you think you will remember Gandharita Girdhari's lotus feet? But when you are stand, sitting or standing in this temple hall and looking around, seeing photos of Lord Chaitanya, Lord Krishna, Prabhupada, Gandharita Girdhari, do you think that there is a bigger and a better chance for you to remember the lotus feet of Gandharita Girdhari? So therefore, do you agree that place is important, at least in the initial stages? Many of you are staying in base, many of you are staying in a temple-like environment, many of you are staying in the temple, many of you are staying in the association of devotees. Do you think if you give up all this, will you be able to practice Krishna consciousness? No. So therefore, place is very important. And next thing which is very important is the association of devotees. One who wants to be liberated from the clutches of modes of material nature, they have to render service to those who are already liberated. Sushusha Shraddha Dhanasya Vasudeva Katharuchi Syan Mahat Sevaya Vipra Punya Tirth Nishevana. So, when we serve those great elevated devotees whose heart has become purified by the practice of Krishna consciousness, then that service is a great service. When that devotee becomes pleased with us, then we get Vasudeva Katharuchi. You know, we become attracted towards the nectarian name, form, qualities and pastimes of Krishna. Once we have attained that attraction, that means we have become distasteful and we have become completely detached from the modes of material nature and the material world in general. See, this material world is a miserable place for people who are in the clutches of modes of material nature. But those who are liberated from the modes of material nature, those who are Jeevan Muktas, for them, this material world is also as good as Vaikunt. Because whenever they see, they see everything. When they see a particular object, they wanted to use it in service of Krishna. When they see a particular body, they see the spirit soul in that body, which is a part and parcel of Krishna. Whenever they see any praise or appreciation coming, they offer it to their Guru. When they see some criticism coming, they take it as Mahaprasad of Krishna. So for them, there is no need of any lamentation or hankering. And they, they, are not, they are actually not suffering in this material world. They are just simply waiting for the time when they can quit their body and go back home, back to God. So, if we want to get into that phase, we have to associate with those people who are already in that phase. That is called a Sadhu Sangha. So without Sadhu Sangha, it is not possible. So these Prachetas, they wanted to practice this uh, concept of Pandita Samadarshina. So they went to a person who was already perfect in it, Jajali Mani. And they wanted to serve him. They wanted to take his association, Sadhu Sangha. And they wanted to associate with a devotee of Krishna. And then they also wanted to become perfect. So that is the point which is being highlighted in this verse. So just to summarize today's discussion, the Prachetas, after staying uh, for a long, long period of time, they realized that uh, since they are in a very difficult environment, uh, where they are not able to fully dedicate themselves to the chant and remember the name, form, qualities and pastimes of Krishna, so some material accumulation had come upon them. At least they felt like that. So they decided to quit their home and practice that spiritual knowledge in which one becomes equal to all living entities. That would lead to perfection in Krishna consciousness. So they went and to the western seashore side in the association of Jajali Muni. Prabhupada is saying that two things are very important, austerity and the study of Vedas is very important in the cultivation of spiritual life. 
even if one is very advanced, they cannot ignore the austerities and the study of Vedas because these things make pure souls purer. And then Prachetas wanted to hit the Brahma Bhuta platform. And after that, they wanted to go further by rendering devotional service. They didn't want to become Mayavadis or Brahmavadis. They wanted to under they, they, they clearly understood that perfect knowledge means one does not see the body. They see the spirit soul and they always have this ambition that how can I assist this particular soul in advancing back home, back to Godhead. That is called as Pandita Samadarshana consciousness. By which a Pandita will see a Brahmana and engage them in Bhagavatam discourse. A cow, they will take the milk of the cow for service of Krishna. An elephant, they will put the deity of Krishna on the elephant and make them go around. A dog, they will feed Krishna Prasad to the dog. A dog eater, they will engage the dog eater in a particular way so that the dog eater may give up his embarrassing, sinful life and hear the Harikatha and Harikirti. In this way, uh, one actually becomes a Brahma Bhuta and hits and goes beyond the Brahma Bhuta by attaining the Pandita platform and rendering devotional service to Krishna. And for doing all this, two things are very important. The place where you want to practice Krishna consciousness, at least in the initial stages, it is important. And everything becomes fruitful and everything becomes effective when it is done in the association of devotees, that is called Sadhu Sangha. With that, I would like to conclude today's discussion. Any questions, comments, you can take. Yeah, I, one second, one second, I'll pass the mic. Hare Krishna, how this Akadasi fasting helps us to connect with the Supreme Personality? Yes, how Ekadashi is helpful in connecting to Krishna. See, Krishna is Karuna Sindhu. He is very merciful. He is looking for excuses and opportunities to give spiritual credits to people via which they become qualified to enter the kingdom of God. Once Krishna was passing through the hill. As soon as Krishna entered the premises of, for Krishna, there is no place called heaven on hell. It's, it's just his creation. But as soon as he entered the premises of the hill, simply by the presence of Krishna, everybody felt that we are in bliss. All the suffering was gone. The boiling oil was removed. The beating sticks were vanished. Everything, everybody came in bliss completely. And they were all standing with folded hands in front of the Lord. And then the Lord finished his business and then he was when he was leaving there, then again the hellish existence started coming. So they again called out to the Lord and then they said, my dear Lord, please help us. It is impossible for us to go through this hellish existence. So therefore the Lord said, okay, I'll give you a proposal. Let this Ekadashi be called as the day of Lord Hari. Let this day be called as mine day, my day. And anybody who executes any kind of Japa, Tapa or Vrata on this day will never enter hell. Krishna said like this and left. So it is the mercy of Krishna that he has given this opportunity. Real hell means body consciousness. There is no bigger hell than that. One goes to hell because of body consciousness. So the root cause of all hellish existence is to think that I am this body and I am not the spirit soul. So when somebody executes this Ekadashi, Krishna helps them uh, by giving them devotional credits. Madhav Tithi Hari Bhakti Janani. So when you observe this Ekadashi, automatically the Krishna consciousness which is there in your heart will become stronger. Automatically, detachment will come. Automatically, you will feel more enthusiastic to serve Krishna. Why? Because Krishna has told that this is my day. 
when you follow someone's instructions suppose somebody asks you suppose your father tells you go and get this from the garden or from the market when you get this will your not will your father not be happy with you yeah i told him he did it similarly krishna is giving us one excuse he is giving us one instruction that okay observe this ekadashi and when we do that krishna becomes pleased and then he uses that excuse to give, bestow upon us devotional credits devotional merits by which we advance in krishna consciousness by his mercy we realize that we are not this body we are a spirit soul by his mercy we vanquish all the sinful reactions by his mercy we advance in our krishna consciousness so therefore by executing ekadashi we go closer to krishna did you follow Yes, you can ask. I'll repeat the question. Yes. The question is, uh, those who are doing austerities without the knowledge of Atma Tattva, they are in the category of Hirani Kashpu. That was the statement made in the class. But the question which has come is that we see in the seventh canto that Hirani Kashpu gave almost the entire second chapter of Bhagavad Gita class to the people when Hirani Aksha had quit his body. This is little contradicting. The answer to this question is, Hirani Kashipu's class on Atma Tattva was a political agenda. The demons also know the second chapter of Bhagavad Gita. But they use it to meet their agenda. If they have some aim in mind, they will use it. They will use the Bhagavad Gita. They will use this philosophy of body and spirit soul for their own welfare. See, what is the Samam Bonam of Bhagavad Gita? Sarva Dharman Paripurja. The second chapter of Bhagavad Gita was told to ultimately come to this point. If somebody doesn't do this Sarva Dharman Paripurja, but keeps quoting the shlokas of Bhagavad Gita to fulfill their political agenda or fulfill their false ego, and that is not Atma Tattva. They are speaking about Atma Tattva, but that is not Atma Tattva. Having information and having realized knowledge they are two different things. Hiranyakashipu can speak a lot about the Bhagavad Gita. But he has not realized it. If he had realized it, he wouldn't have desired, he wouldn't have taken a determination to kill Vishnu and then go and do tapasya for that. That means he did not, he spoke about Atma Tattva, but he did not realize the Atma Tattva himself. That is why Bhagavad Gita is Jnana Vijnana Sahitam. It has knowledge as well as realized knowledge and this comes to only those people who are devotees of krishna bhaktiya mama vijana so those who are not devotees of krishna like these vedantists even if they speak about the vedanta philosophy even if they speak about the brahman all of it has no value because they have not understood that the goal of all knowledge is krishna vedeshya sarvair ahameva vedyo vedanta krit veda vidyeva chaham if they have not realized that, then their all their Vedic study is a waste of time. Even Duryodhana knew the Vedas. But what was he doing? He was ordering that Draupadi should be disrobed. So, such Vedic knowledge or such Vedantic knowledge or such Atma Tattva has no value. Because they have not realized it, they are not practicing it. That is why in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, what is the qualification of knowing this Vedanta? or the Bhagavad Gita. Bhakto si me sakha cheti. Rahasyam hieta duttam. First one has to become a devotee of Krishna. And second one has to have a non-envious, friendly service attitude towards Krishna. Then they can understand this Atma Tattva. Otherwise, Rahasyam hieta duttam. You become an expert person in reciting the Bhagavad Gita. So much so that you know the entire Bhagavad Gita including the second chapter. 
but you will not understand it will remain a rahasya for you so therefore at one in one of the lectures Shila Prabhupada, one of the disciples stood up and said, Shila Prabhupada, I can recite the entire Bhagavad Gita in two hours. Shila Prabhupada asked him, can you live the Bhagavad Gita for two hours? So living the Bhagavad Gita for two hours and reciting the Bhagavad Gita for two hours are two different things. So similarly, Hiranya Kashipu, he had that Vedic knowledge. After all, his father was Kashyap Munwani. So he had the Vedic knowledge. But he did not practice it, he did not realize it, and he did not propagate it. So therefore, he cannot be called as a true Vedantist or a true person who knew the Atma Tattva. He wanted to quickly go and uh, execute penances, but he saw that his family members were disturbed and they were an obstacle in his path to execute a particular mission. So just to silence them and just to put his kingdom in a proper place, he used the Vedantic knowledge for his own well purpose which he had in his mind that I want to exit. So let me speak the Vedas and calm down everybody quickly and let me get out of here. So although he spoke Atma Tattva, but he didn't know Atma Tattva. This is my understanding. Right? If this answers your question. You have a follow-up question? Yes. Initially, Jajali was not a Pandita. He was not a Pandita. When he associated with devotees of Krishna, he became a Pandita. Jajali from his birth only wanted to be Sama Sarvesum Bhukesh. That desire he had. But because he did not have the Sadhu Sangha, his endeavors, although they led him to a level of uh, achievement, but they, he did not hit the perfection. But when he associated with devotees, he became perfect. So therefore, Prachetas wanted to take his shelter. So Jajali was the authority after associating with devotees in the skill or the art or the devotional art of becoming equal to all living entities. That means seeing everybody at the spiritual platform. Is a devotee of Krishna. Any other question, comments, reflections, disagreements? Ranthraj Shrimad Bhagavatam Kij, Gaur Bhakti Vrind Kij, Jagad Guru Srila Prabhupada Kij.